because that's one of the things that makes us stop is when we feel overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed, you tend to sit down and not do. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I'm thrilled you're joining me today. In this show, we explore how to live your exciting, creative, and most fulfilling life. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am super happy you're here. Here is a little before 2 a.m., and I am on the New Jersey Turnpike, actually at a rest area on the New Jersey Turnpike, after I just finished the most amazing class with uh, voice actor Paul Liberti. He is incredible. And I'm talking about some stuff today that actually relates to other stuff that I'm doing. And I apologize if this meanders a little bit, but there it is. So last week, I had on the show Chris Griggs, who is was the instructor to the stand-up comedy class that I just took. And that was an amazing class because it opened me up to something that I had been truthfully kind of running away from for some time, for decades. And that was that that in addition to the music part of my performing life, I love to act and I love to direct and I have not really done it since college and I miss it dreadfully. And so I took this acting class with Paul Liberti and learned so much about who I am and who I want to be. And I think sometimes it takes someone else. It takes someone standing outside of you but next to you to reflect back what it is that you most need and probably secretly want to know or to hear or to see. For me, it was a reminder about how much I love performing, about how much I love acting, about how much I want to bring characters to life. And and I want to keep doing it, you know? I want to keep making that a an ever bigger part of my life. And here's what's interesting about that. When I look at acting, when I look at the other things I'm doing, they are in beautiful proportion and in beautiful combination with other things. I know that may not make any sense, but bear with me. So one of the things that Paul talked a lot about is the rule of three. And that is that uh, phrases, sentences, sometimes even words can be broken up into the rule of three. And we talked a lot about threes, and I've talked about this on the show before, that things seem to break up into threes, right? We have morning, noon, and night, beginning, middle, end, uh, life, death, rebirth, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So there, there are so many th- aspects of our world that break up into three. And also we hear things best that way, right? So we hear things best when they are broken up into threes. We learn them best that way too. It's just, it's easier on you if you break things up into, into threes. And so we would break up sentences as part of, uh, or phrases as part of the work we were doing in acting. And it was amazing to be part of that. And then I look at the book I'm about to release called Get Your Stuff Done. And I'm back recording the next day. So I had started talking about Get Your Stuff Done. And the book itself is actually sort of about to be released. It's all approved on my end. I've gotten everything in and now I'm waiting for Amazon's approval for the book to come out in print. And once they approve it, which should happen in the next 72 hours, uh, I'll definitely be putting information up about that. And here's why. As I mentioned, uh, my 
teacher in voiceovers was talking about how we live in threes, phrases are in threes. And I've been talking about this for living in threes for years with my clients and in my own work, right? Think about morning, noon, and night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, life, death, and rebirth. Yes, no, maybe. There are so many aspects to phrasing and breathing and moving and living that are going to be some sort of a trinity. I mean, you can even say Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Maiden, Mother, Crone, whatever it is, right? He, she, it, if you will, what, whatever those things are. And he, she, it actually doesn't work so well anymore, even though it's a phenomenal book by Marge Piercy, because uh, we have uh, he, she, them, or other sort of along the continuum, but I wonder if even those could be broken up into different kinds of threes. I don't know, but that's something to think about because I think that this idea of everything being in a trinity of sorts is really important. We see it more easily. We can recognize patterns more easily. According to phenomenal acting teacher Paula Birdie, we can speak in threes much more easily. So we break everything up into threes and we don't think in words, we think in phrases. But all of those phrases can be broken up into thirds and then all of those thirds can be broken up into further thirds. And this jibes really beautifully with what I have been thinking about with Get Your Stuff Done. To me, if we look at everything we want to accomplish, if we want to increase what we produce, what we achieve, what we accomplish, the best way to do it is to attack it all in threes, tackle it in threes. So when I put together the book and the system, I did it in that way. See, I tried everything from day timers back in the 90s, or actually I think that was even in the late 80s, to uh, you name the app. I've tried it and nothing seems to work as well as when I write things down and then cross them off my list. Now, Adam Grant, who's a phenomenal sociologist out of UPenn, talks about how we should all, excuse me, (coughs) (coughs) as you know, this is raw, real and not edited. And when I cough, it's in there. So he talks about how we should each find our own path to productivity, to creativity. And I agree, actually. I just think that this path is a really easy on-ramp. And that's the way I look at the entire Get Your Stuff Done system. It's no muss, no fuss. You want to get stuff done? Here's a method to do it with. And how I did it was I wanted a place to brain dump. I wanted a place to just get whatever's in my head out on paper. And frankly, for some reason, it works a lot better to do it on paper than it does to do it digitally, like to type it into a computer or to speak it into my phone. So I do a brain dump. And in that brain dump, I get little kernels of ideas, or I have realizations, or I remember things I have to do. So I gave myself a little key uh, that if I... uh, If I have a realization about something as I'm doing my little brain dump in the morning, put a little asterisk by it. Or if I have a realization, an aha moment, I put a little star by what I've written. Or if I go, oh, that's right, I wanted to get that email out today and I write write that down as part of my morning brain sort of funneling into, or maybe brain sieve is a better way of putting it, then I put a little hashtag by it. So at the end of the time that I've spent writing, and it's not a lot, it's just one page, I have marked down all of the things that I might have realized, figured out, remembered. And those realizations and those to-do items and those aha moments, those ideas are all marked as soon as they happen. So I don't forget them. Now, I know that there are people out there who go, oh, if it's a really good idea, you'll remember it. But you know what? I can't help thinking that we are so overstimulated. We are so hyper stimulated. There's so much coming at us at any one time that even the best ideas can fall away if we don't have some way of marking them. So that's what that brain dump in the get your stuff done journal is all about. It's just a way of blorking everything out on paper. And then as you 
come out with a nugget of something juicy, which sounds a little gross now that I say it that way. But as you come out with something, some aha moment, you mark it down immediately. At the end of writing this stuff down, you look and see, did you have any? Did you have any realizations today? Did you have any memories crop up that you wanted to get this thing accomplished today? If you do, then you just turn the page and the very next page is where you can write all that stuff down. Now, that next page I broke down into something that I think is really important. First and foremost is gratitude. And I ask that you, and by you I mean me because I developed the system for myself and then worked on it with a bunch of people who helped me test it to see that it was going to be really useful to not just me, but to other people too. That attitude of gratitude, I know it sounds corny, but I don't care. It works. Putting yourself in a mindset where you're grateful and where you spend even a little bit of time thinking about what you're grateful about is life-altering. And every day I write down three things and I don't just write them down. I spend just a little bit of time thinking about what it is that made me grateful today. Often it's my cats because they're often right near me when I'm writing in my journal. So that's true. But sometimes it's uh, the, I just took this phenomenal class with Paul Liberty. So today's journal, I wrote down that I was grateful for him. He was instrumental in some uh, big realizations for me over the last few weeks. And so I, I, he, I'm, he was what I was grateful for today or one of the things. And then After I'm done with those gratitudes, I write down projects, three projects, no more than three, because remember, this is the power of three. Three is powerful. So I write down three projects that I want to work on today. And then each of those projects (coughs) has three tasks and no more than three tasks. Now, you might have six tasks you want to do in one project. Well, then, if I know that I'm going to be spending today, for example, writing, doing uh, creative writing, writing on my fiction, for example, and I want to outline one chapter and I want to get a thousand words written in another chapter and I want to edit a third chapter, but then I also need to work up a character profile, well, I wouldn't go, oh, this one project gets four. No. You write the project down twice and you do three sets of three for each one. There's something about that magical three that lets us do that. It lets us focus in on it and go beginning, middle, end. Morning, noon, and night. Sun up, sun down, sunset, whatever it is. You know, it's whatever that thing is that that allows us to have everything thought of in threes and once you get to that three, it somehow feels more complete, is powerful. And so that's what I'm going to ask you to stick with. If you're doing this, that's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you get the journal and try to use it, that's that's the secret, is do it so that everything is in threes. So once you've written out your projects for the day and you've written out your tasks, three tasks per project, go about your day and finish those tasks. Write them out and finish them. Often mine are business If I have emails to send, if I have, uh, this time of year, I have a lot of logistics to do with my holiday caroling group. So that might be one of the projects, whatever it is. There are times when it's learn this new song or figure out the fingering part for this violin part for this piece that I'm writing, whatever it is, write it down. And then as you do it, as you accomplish it, mark it off big big old X through the little box next to the thing that you wrote down for yourself to do. And that is crucial. There's something really powerful about accentuating that you've achieved something so that you can let it go and move on to the next thing. And I'm not telling you not to credit yourself, credit yourself all you want, but finish the thing you've worked on that you finished and move on to the next thing. Keep yourself in the present moment. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't look too forward to the next thing, but be present with what you are doing and what you've just achieved so that you can move on with clear eyes and a clear conscience. At the end of the day, you do a check-in. Check in with yourself. See how you are. See how you feel. And what were your wins today? Write it down. Write everything down. Because at some point, you're going to want to evaluate. 
And in fact, in the journal, every week, there's an evaluation piece. At the at, You can do it Sunday to Sunday or however you want to do it. Every seven days, you evaluate. This week, I achieved this. This coming week, I want to achieve that. This is how I feel about it and any notes. What are the projects I want to work on? Everything, once a week, go through it. Plan your time out. Because so many of us are, as I said, so hyper-stimulated, sorry, <coughs> that we we don't have the wherewithal, we don't have the headspace to really make this uh, something we can be aware of without being really purposeful with it. Write it down. Look at it. Make sure it's in threes, you know, and then assess for yourself what it is. And here's the interesting thing about this. This is a 12-week journal. It's not a year long. It's 12 weeks. It's it's concrete. It's ha- It's got an end point. I'm hoping that as you use the journal, you will develop what works for you out of it. Use what works, lose what doesn't work, you know. What is it? Keep the best, lose the rest. That's really what it is. You don't want to take something that doesn't feel natural to you and force yourself into it. Use what works from it and adapt if you want to. That's that's great with me. You know, it's your process. But this is a really good blueprint to start with. And here's the final piece of the puzzle. What I didn't mention before was that when you first start the journal, you get to reward yourself. Well, that's not true. You get to figure out how you will reward yourself at the end of this 12 week cycle, because everything's going to go in 12 weeks. It's not, um, it's not a year long. It's not six months. It's 12 weeks. And then you assess for yourself where you are, what you've achieved, and then you do it all again. So let's say you decide that you're going to achieve, that you're going to write a book in these next 12 weeks. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're going to write an opera. Maybe you're going to learn how to dance. Maybe you're going to do yoga every day. Maybe you're going to get a new job. Whatever it is, you're going, this is your big, I'm going to do this for the next 12 weeks. I'm going to achieve this by 12 weeks from now. Well, some people say that doing it is its own reward. And that's lovely. But you know what? I like rewards. I like to treat myself. I often treat myself with, I'm going to go have a spa day. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to save my money and I'm going to go get a massage or I'm going to go treat myself to the best dinner I can afford at the time. Or I'm going to go on a journey to some really great new place in New York City that I haven't yet been to. Whatever it is that I want to reward myself with, I promise myself a reward. And when I achieve what I set out to achieve, because I because that's one of the things you have to do is you go, by 12 weeks from now, I will have achieved this. When I achieve it at the end of that 12 weeks, I reward myself. Make it concrete. Make it something you want. And make it good for you. You know, make it something that will that will add to your life. Don't go... Um, you know, I, I don't know, whatever dangerous thing that you, <laughs> I, I have no, I'm not going to uh, speculate on, on things that aren't good for us, but make it something that will benefit your life. Make it something that will add to your purpose. Uh, if you're, if you're like my friend, Megan, you might go spend the afternoon playing at a, at a cat shelter and, and petting kitty cats. That, that would be amazing for her. Um, you know, I might reward myself with, um, fixing my guitar, which, uh, got dropped, not by me, but by somebody else, uh, a few weeks ago and it needs to be fixed. (coughs) So that's going to be one of my rewards to myself is fixing that guitar as part of, uh, the process of the journal. So, you know, whatever it is, that's going to be helpful to you. That's going to bring you joy and pleasure in a really good and healthy way. Do that. Right. So, Promise yourself what you're going to reward yourself with. Because for some of us, as I said, doing it is its own reward. And for some of us, we need a little something, something extra. I'm a something, something extra kind of person. I prefer to have something concrete that I am going to reward myself with. Now, it's not, I'm not bribing myself. I'm rewarding myself for my efforts, for my good behavior, for my striving, for my staying on task. And the whole point of all this is to get your stuff done, right? We all have goals. 
And we all feel like we don't have enough time to achieve them. Well, this is a system that I've designed that actually really works for me and it might work for you too. That's all about that. You know, it is all about how to make it simple, how to make it basic, and how to make it work. You know, you want to get your stuff done, but you feel overwhelmed, break it down into manageable pieces, into manageable chunks. You do that, and you're going to be amazed at what you can achieve. So the book isn't out yet. It's going to be out sometime this week, I hope. And if you are like, oh, I have to have it, I have to have it, uh, head over to H-T-T-P-S-S. Did I do that right? <laughs> I don't even, all of a sudden, I can't remember how to do um, the URL. Well, it's IsoldaT.com. So I-Z-O-L-D-A dot, uh, is I-Z-O-L-D-A T dot com. My goodness, I, I, I don't know why I can't say that. I am very tired. That's probably why I can't say it. I have not had a lot of sleep in the last 24 to 48 hours because I've been uh, gigging a lot. But, uh, so sorry if I sound like I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm not drunk at all. I'm just exhausted. Uh, and I'm yet I'm doing a podcast because I'm supposed to, right? And I, and I, and it was on my to-do list for today in my journal. Anyway, so, um, isoldat.com slash G Y S D, you know, get your stuff done. So G Y S D. If you go there in the next few days and check back, you're going to be able to see the link to the Amazon link to get the journal. And if you see me in person, I'm going to have author's copies probably in the next few weeks. So if I see you in New York somewhere or Maryland where I'm gigging a lot right now through the end of the year, you can go, hey, do you have it? And I might very well. So that'd be great if you want it. I can even autograph it for you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, if you if you want to grab it and try it, I'm I'd be thrilled. And if you have questions about how to start, get in touch with me because it's a system I developed, and it's a system I tested with a bunch of people, like thirty people helped, and then I did a mastermind using these concepts and this journal, and we did it for six months of just testing and testing and testing and testing to make sure that it worked to make sure that the journal provided what you needed. So I hope that you will at least take the concepts. If you decide the journal isn't for you, at least take the concepts and break things down into manageable chunks for yourself to keep yourself from being overwhelmed because that's one of the things that makes us stop is when we feel overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed, you tend to sit down and not do. And I got to tell you, the best way to move forward <laughs> is to move forward. You know, even one tiny step at a time, move forward. And what I'm asking you to do is not just one step, but three. Three smallest, most manageable pieces. Do those. Don't try to do, don't try to climb a mountain. Try to take a step. Or in this case, three steps. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I'm going to take on off <laughs> and uh, and get some sleep before my next gig tomorrow morning. And I want to send you all of my love. And I hope that you will get your stuff done. Until next time, this is Isolda. And I, I'll see you. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and please tell your friends about the community we're building here. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright Isolde Trachtenberg 2019. Today's music was from Kevin McLeod, Laser Groove, and Avi Marimba, brought to you by Creative Commons License 3.0. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, I send you all all of my love.